In this second video, we will see what is a node in Godot. We will see how the program is running, and we will understand how objects work in Godot so that you can actually make pretty much everything by yourself without having to watch hundreds of videos. Here is a good project which looks like pretty much what you will have if you create something new. It doesn't really matter at the moment. What is important is this thin tree visualizer here. So Godot functions with the system of nodes and scene. Let me open an already existing scene so that you can see. Here, we have an example of a tree of a scene. So we have the root node at the very top, and then we do have nodes branching from that root node, which are sort of contained within it. Okay. The game, Ingdo, behaves as one big node tree. You have the primordial root node of your game that branches into all the rest of your game. Yet, Godot uses a system of scenes. What it means is that you can work on individual scenes, which are separated, and they work as their own individuated tree, sort of. So here, let me show you. We have another scene, which is just another example, very similar to the first one, but they are independent from each other. Yet I can choose to go in that example zero and drag and drop that example one in it so that it is now plugged in this tree. So the example so the one is going to be part of the tree of the example zero. I can choose to move it so that we can see there's two scenes here. We have the example zero, button zero, and then we have the example one with the button one going here. So really a scene is just a node which contains other nodes because they are branching from that first node, if that makes sense. It will make more sense when we build the game, don't worry. But yeah, so this is pretty much how good it works. Right? We have the primordial root that we define in the product settings, and then all the other scenes that you create will come to build up your game part by part. So back to this empty interface, let's actually create an, just a control node, a user interface node, to see how the program is running within that node. So in order to add a script, I usually prefer to save my scene. So this is, let's name, let's, yeah, it's going to be control. And let's rename this scene game at the moment, because imagine that this scene is our entire game. An entire game can fit in one scene, right? That's possible. In order to add a script, you just right click on the node to attach a script, or you use the shortcut button. And here, by default, you will have a template uh, added to that. Uh, I usually like to not use the templates, but I will do just to show you what we have. So here we have three things. The first one is that we have a line that connects this class to already existing objects. So this line here is kind of packing a pack of information of variables and properties that we can use in this script here, but we will see that a little bit later. And here are two methods that we can create, which are actually allowing us to grab the flow of instruction that goes through the game. So because we are using a game engine here, Godot has a flow of instruction that goes from the beginning to the end of the game, which is something we don't necessarily need to have 
control on. However, by using specific entry points, we can grab this flow of instruction and say, all right, so when you arrive here at this point, I want you to do some specific things. And this is where you will be weaving your own instructions to create the kind of behaviors you do want to do. So here we do have two functions. The first one is the ready and the second one is the process. So Godot says that the first one is called when the node enters the scene tree for the first time. So basically when the node is entering the tree, which is a specific thing, it's not when the node is created, it's when it enters the tree. And this is something we will see much later. But yeah, we so here I'm going to use the method print. The print method is actually displaying some text in the console. So I do have actually to say what text I want to display. So here we will have I. Okay. So if we run the scene at the right corner here, we run the current scene, we will see that the console is displaying high because the node game was added to the tree and because it was entering the tree we weaved those instructions in there so now we can do the same with process we can print something which is going to be uh, processing it's said here you can see we have a lot of messages appearing because that's every frame of the game and that's a lot of frames. So this is pretty much how you add instructions to the instruction flow of the game. You use those entry points, ready, process, and there are other entry points that we will see later on. But yeah, and you weave in your instructions in there. Now to actually talk about this extend control line here. I will actually create a button. Okay, so here if we go back to the 2D view, we have created a button that is displayed here. If you remember what I said in the previous video, I talked about objects being constructs of variables and methods. So technically this button here is a construct of variable and methods. We have two ways to visualize those properties, properties being the variables and methods being methods. So you can see in the instructor on the right here, when you select the node in the tree, you will have access to some of the properties which are meant to be edited. So here at the bottom, for example, it has a text value. So you can say, this is my button. You can then go a little bit lower, I will tell you where it is, in control, under layout, you can find the position, for example. So here you can say 100 pixel and 100 pixel. So this changes the position of the button. You can make it bigger by having it like this, etc, etc. So you can choose the values of the variables of that object in the inspector here. Now, these are variables which are contained within the object of the button. So if we create a script on this button, and on ready here, we decide to say that we want the text, which is the variable here, Right? You can see that it is the property text. If we change it to something different to say, you no, know, this is my button, he doesn't do anything here because it is the editor, but when we run the scene, it will say, no, this is my button because the node was added to the tree and because it was added to the tree it went through the instructions of the ready function and we have overwritten the text of this button. 
All right. We have this specific line, extends control. Understand that this line is created based on the node we are attaching the script to. So here it is a button, so it extends button, and here it is a control, so it extends control. What actually happens is that this entire script here is a class. And from the previous video, a class is the definition or the blueprint of an object. So what it means is that here we are defining how the object behaves, how it functions. And here in the tree, we are actually instantiating this object by creating a variable that will contain this object being initialized. Might still be a little bit confusing because, yeah, it's a bit abstract, but the more we go in the series, the more sense it will make. So since it is an object, it is a construct of variables and methods. So for example, here we have the property, the variable text, which is contained within this script, but you can see that at no point it is written or declared anywhere. It is because this property actually comes from the class button. What happens here is that the class that we are creating is inheriting from all the properties of another class. So if I do control click on this button here, it will open the documentation of this class here button. And we will have a written file about it. In there, we do have a category properties, which have different variable names. Here you have the variable types, and here you have the default values. So because our script here is inheriting from the button, all the properties here are existing and they are created every time we create a button with this script on. In fact, we can name this class by defining a class name, which is going to be my button. Now, if I go in the documentation here by searching help and look for my button, we will see that it exists. And we can see that my button is actually inheriting from button. And we can see that button is actually inheriting from a lot of other nodes. Okay. So we can reach this page, which is empty because I created this class, but didn't document it. Back to the button page. If we go back at the very top, we'll see that this button is inheriting from base button, control, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we can now go in, in base button and see that we do have even more properties and even more methods. Same for control, even more properties and even more methods. Same for node, even more properties and even more methods. So why is that important? Because building a game in Godot is all about creating nodes and updating their properties, playing with their properties and their methods. How you can create specific behavior by using all those things which have been creating and thought through so that you can make gains with those. Also, I want to bring your attention to something very specific. Here we are in the class node, which is pretty much the class that every node in the game inherits from. And if we scroll a little bit, we will find the ready function and the process function. So what does it really mean that we have those two functions here and that we do recreate those here as well. 
what it means is that the function in node, they are virtual function, and we can see that here, they are virtual. And Guido says about it that this method is called by the engine, and it can be overridden to customize built-in behaviors. And this is exactly what we did. We have typed this function again in here in order to change the behavior of this method for this entire node. And by changing the behavior of this method for this entire node, we are actually reaching to those entry points I was talking about earlier. So this is pretty much all I want to show you in this episode. It will make more sense when we actually work on a practical subject. But here I really wanted to show you how to go fetch information and to understand a little bit better how the concept of the properties, the objects, the nodes, all those kind of things are actually working together. So I hope this was useful and I will see you in the next video of your choice.